Larry James Fair. <laughs> Larry James Fair. Okay. So we'll see if I have, if you jinxed it by saying that, this is how. <laughs> okay. Um, the agenda that we have for today, today is April the 9th. Uh, we'll get an update from the administration. Um, followed by the economic development, which I see that is sitting here all anxious and ready to go. And then we'll have David is doing economic development. Oh, oh, David. Okay, good. David is doing economic development. All right, good. All right, and then we're going to have a presentation of our park and rec, so then the balance of the time. We're not having the general fund and revenue update today, and so the balance of the time will be spent on the tax rate consideration. There is a paper before us, there are several papers before us, uh, that council will be voting on the new tax rate on Monday. And so this committee needs to uh, be positioned to make a recommendation on those papers to the full council. So that is going to require full action of the committee. So uh, I want to thank Dr. Rath and his team, all of you guys, for doing a marvelous job with this leader. I know you all probably sleeping with the numbers in your heads. Um, and, um, I appreciate the reports that you're preparing for us. You've done a great job of summarizing the information and putting it in an organized way that makes it easy for us to follow through this process. Um, I think each year it improves and we're doing better this year. Staff is doing it so we can complete all those items before we get it to the council. 
So if we got individual questions from council members, they will be included in the handout. Is that yes, what you're seeing around? That is correct. Okay, well maybe I need to just kind of And that's it in terms of scheduling the changes. Uh, there are a lot of questions. Staff is prepared to give an overview of the analysis we've done with regard to economic development department and the parks and recreation. Please note, uh, we apologize, the parks and rec answers did not come in until sometime later today, so we literally just got them right before we came in. So, Mr. Lee, I'll give you a walk through that information. Right now, Mr. Dillon, we'll talk about economic development. Good afternoon, Madam Chair, members of the Finance Committee. Uh, starting on page two of your package is the questions that we sent to staff, sent to uh, the Economic Development Department, and, and their responses back. I'm just going to highlight, not to go through all these questions, because uh, we, we did provide you this package this morning. Hopefully, you had a chance to digest <laughs> some of it. <laughs> but I'll, I'll, I'll hit some of the key areas just, just for your review. Uh, Question one, strategic goal. Economic Development Department is currently working on developing a strategic plan for the department. As you may recall, there was a plan prepared in 2003, if I'm not mistaken, that was not fully adopted by the prior administration. So they're still currently working through uh, getting that plan together. Their intent is to hire an outside consultant that will come in and help them with some of the uh, planning that, that's going to be involved in strategic plan. So they were, unable, I'm sorry, they were unable to provide that to us prior to today. Um, but they, they did make reference in their in the budget document suggested that that was one of the functions that would not be done based on the cuts to the department. Yes, ma'am. Correct? Yes, ma'am. Okay. And, and that's probably because they cannot hire that consultant with the cuts to perform that service. Wasn't those funds appropriated in the current budget? That's, if I recall, they were. I will check on that, Madam Chair. Get that back to you. Uh, going over some of the other questions, they have a series of new program and services proposals. Well, some of their uh, future programs that they that they have proposed to the mayor. Uh, I brought those proposals, but not included in this year's budget. That's just some of the initiatives that they would like to see happen within the department. On page three, if I could bring attention to question number four, mandated services and programs, the Enterprise Zone Initiative uh, is a mandated service, uh, program from the state. That funding has to be consistent with the state guidelines or the state will cut off funding to that program uh, that they have on their, their department there. That's approximately $500,000 approximately $500, to initiate that program, uh, to implement that program in the department. Flipping over to uh, page six, impact on service deliveries. The, the, main, uh, the main impact that they will have is a joint program that they have they, with their care initiatives and some of the other ventures they have a very rich in partnership with some of you. Mr. Dale, I'm sorry for no, sorry. Um, The 500,000 that you were just talking about in the mandated services programs, Page three, question four, third paragraph. Is that the five thousand dollar increase in the special fund, or is this a different five hundred thousand dollars? This is, if I recall correctly, this is a different five hundred thousand dollars. I can clarify that and get back with you, Mr. Saints, but if I recall it correctly, it's a different five hundred thousand. I'm sorry, going back over to page four, impact services, service and delivery. Uh, their, their main impact would be the, uh, they could not partner with organizations like Green Virtual Partnership and some of the economic development partners. A Green Virtual Partnership actually uh, goes on trips throughout the course of the year to try to draw uh, businesses to the area. And economic development currently has not been able to be at the table at a lot of those meetings they have come to the table, come to the table at some of those meetings that are closer to home. And, uh, because of the budget cuts, they won't be able to 
to participate in the meetings that they were prior, were able to prior, because they don't have the resources to send a director or whoever out on those trips, from, from their understanding. Mm -hmm. That's so easy. <laughs> so, so their, their answer is, when the city of Richmond, the greater Richmond area, goes out to lure companies to the area, the city of Richmond government is not represented. Of all the goals, the city of Richmond is not represented at the table because uh, they, they are, uh, do not have resources to attend a lot of the functions that are overseas or in other uh, places in the country. And they can, I'm glad they just walked in, they can answer that question further. Do you have any questions about that? <coughs> On page six, they have provided some performance management uh, measures there for your review. And, and it just simply speaks to the number of business estates, number of business retained, number of business expanded through, the pro, through their programming initiatives and some of the other things they have going on in the department. I just want to highlight the major bulk of economic development money goes to the actual personnel around 873,000 is proposed in this year, and that's a bulk of their actual budget. So there is only a little wiggle room in their budget to other initiatives that they have in the department. Uh, I'm, I know they have prepared a PowerPoint presentation for your enjoyment today. And I, if you have any further questions, they're going to answer them. Okay. Um, all right, then let's, let's move to uh, the presentation from economic development and we'll come back for the analysis as it relates to property before we have the presentation.
to improve the per capita income, expand the city's tax base and fiscal strength, foster neighborhood development projects, stimulate private sector investment and infrastructure improvements to provide a safe environment for the residents of our capital city. The next slide is a current organizational chart. Uh, during my tenure here, workforce development has uh, been relocated under DEB's Supervision. That's something that I hope will continue. I have look forward to working with the administration to see that the, the workforce development, I think, is, uh, is appropriately located in economic development. I will say to you that uh, in the near future, I'm going to be, as we continue to work on our strategic planning process, I'm going to be looking at ways to. Uh, reposition this current chart as that process uh, unfolds, I would certainly keep your staff informed as to how that would work. But I have some ideas about how to uh, integrate some of our staffing in ways to get uh, to maximize uh, the resources that we do have before us. That shows the workforce component as it currently exists.
this talks about personnel and other issues uh, as a result of the impact of the uh, budget that the mayor has presented. And like everyone, we uh, are dealing with those issues and uh, moving forward. The next slide is to discuss anticipated impact on the proposed budget with regard to operations. Again, you can see that as all departments, we've had to address uh, this issue as well. I still feel that even though we... So are you saying that your overall reduction is 25%? In this particular... No, ma'am. 10%. This is the area, there's 25% with regard to operating funds. <coughs> and why is that going to impact the increase of that? I'm sorry, I couldn't hear you. Are you saying that your operational budget is reduced by 10%, but its impact is going to have a 25% impact on your program? Yes, ma'am. The CARE program, the Enterprise Zone program, planning and management services, and reduction in marketing would be four examples under this particular slide. And your staff has the exact numbers associated with each of these slides. Next slide is um, anticipated impact of climatic changes. That further talks to the uh, reductions in this current proposed budget.
I understand that we're on the short list of some of Representative Scott's uh, uh, earmark fundings. So it's positive news with regard to that. some internal improvements within our department that we are looking to move forward with, including not limited to strategic planning initiatives and other service delivery efficiency initiatives. These are low or no cost initiatives. Um, and so long-term issues, future resources, There is no information in this budget about what you're doing as far as federal stimulus funds. So if, if there's something going on specifically about that, then I need to know what that is and how you plan on using those funds and what how they tie back into your mission statement and what should we expect the outcome of those to be as relates to jobs, businesses, and per capita changes. Um, let me ask you about the, um, so some specific questions so that you can help me and, and that continue to just ventilate my frustration. For the uh, capital improvement plan funding, uh, last year there was an adopted budget of $2.7 million. <coughs> What's been done over the past year with that $2.7 million? And what in the world are we thinking about doing with only $150,000 this year? Hi, my name is Carol McLean. I'm here on the Department of Economic Development. Um, the majority of those funds for last year were used for the Philip Morris uh, Development Agreement. We paid them a $1.7 million. Thank you. 
improvements, but that was ours. Okay, so you all made some infrastructure improvements as a part of the, the city made infrastructure development for streetscapes and stuff like that yes. as a part of Philip Morris and Meekless Baker. Yes. And those funds have been expended, those, those capital improvements have been done? Yes.
um, on a wage loan as a source of revenue. Um, how long have we had the option of being able to tap into that money? I mean, is there any chance that that, that would go away? I believe the consolidated plan was amended in late 2006 or early, yeah, 2006. So this money is not going anywhere. We still have. Well, we would probably have to make a trip to Washington or at least do a letter to revive our application or to say that we're still interested. Okay. All right. Uh, and maybe we need to get some information from you all as to what were the criteria that you put in your application. Uh, to get this authorization for this money and how long we're gonna, how long we had it sitting there. And I don't know if this is I'm just gonna say uh, for 20, because million, I put, 20 million dollars, we'll go up there with it. <laughs> well, I, I guess what's troubling me about this um, is that, you know, for a city to be in this situation that we are in, to have access to 20 million dollars and have no no plan of how we're going to tap into it and how we're going to use it. Just it's something. It makes something in my the pit of my stomach feels kind of funny. Well, there would be a couple of other pieces to that too because they have to have a um, debt service in place as well to move forward with the loan fund, but. This is, a, as Carla said, an issue he hasn't had a chance to address to the administration. Okay, you know, but you know what? That's not that's not that's not that's not doing much to this thing again in the pit of my stomach because this money's been out here a long time. It's not something that just came up with the new administration, and I think right. that's that works for a while. And Jerry didn't but, say that. I said. We had several attempts in the last administration to move this process forward. I was told not to do so. So we're into this new administration, 90 days. You have my full assurance. I will be in touch with your staff, provide you all the information you need, and I'm just as interested, and I'll tell you what, I'll drive you to D.C. I don't want to go to D.C. I want to stay right here in Richmond, and I want to see the money, I want to see the I want to make sure that we spent in Richmond, and I'm not interested in going to Washington. Okay, well, no. okay, I will. But I just want to make sure that the full story is out here. That we're not just sitting here pulling our thumbs. I mean, the department has been engaged in this and it's active. And I can assure you that we will move forward expeditiously. All right, let me ask you another question. I'm, I'm reading this and it says the budget reduction funding for the development of an economic development strategic plan. Um, that the reduction in funding, this this sounds like to me like the uh, economic development strategic plan is tabled because of the reduction in funding. All right, help me understand where we're going. The last time we met with you guys, we talked about putting this plan together and. Oh, they took us here. I'm sorry. You're talking about referring to the SEDS from the Finance Committee? I'm reading really what you put in here. You said budget. Reduces funding for the development of an economic development strategic plan. Second line, page 76. Page 76, second line, better operator. If I may mean, take just a moment to clarify myself. The budget reduction is for the care and the enterprise zone incentives and also from the line item um, 3120 that is in our operating budget is going to reflect that. I think we, it was required for us to have a match. 
of about 80 contracts. That's right. I'm sure I recall now. Uh, this, for the SEDS money, which is federal money from the Department of Commerce, we had to put some match into the kitty, and we're just reducing the our match. But it doesn't affect, as I understand it, uh, the federal education. So we would set out monies to proceed with the SEDS process. And to, yes, ma'am. Um, it looks like we received about 97000 last year. Yes. And you asked for 97000 this year. Um, I think um, Denise Laws can reflect that we um, started out um, doing the initiative for the SES. Um, some problems was with that, and I think she can clarify what the problems are. So are we cutting back on the, are we going to do this plan, or are we not going to do this plan? Yes, we're going to do it. I, as you recall from your retreat this past winter, I'm, I expected it to be done. Well, I would like that to have been done as well, but uh, the administration asked me to hold off because the mayor had not had a chance to really be fully briefed, and he was concerned uh, clearly with the budgetary process. So um, I would anticipate now being able to give it him in the near future and his senior staff to move this forward. I know you're anxious and I'm anxious to um, to consult. There is through the procurement process a consultant has been selected and uh, but we haven't moved forward because the mayor has not had a chance to really get his arms around it. consultant. Well I, I, I expect that you would you know obviously it takes whatever time you have to do it but I guess what was confusing to me is that the statement almost suggests this if um, How, how, how much reduction in funding is in this budget as it relates to the economic development strategic plan? What is the reduction? The total amount, the, the total amount is $206,000. And so with the 70, I mean the 97 of last year and the 97 of this year, it's like we have to start over again. That's what I brought Denise down so she can Sweet talk, Mr. Harris. Okay, just, just checking. Okay. 
All right, so that's the only way. So, so basically right now, in the 2010 budget, you have $97,693 allocated under planning management services to start the economic strategic planning process. That's what I'm hearing. Yes. Okay. All right. Thank you. Yes, sir. All right. With the um, special funds, you're showing some projects that in the Brownfield, the Economic Development Authority, the DOR marketing grant, uh, what's the status of those programs? Are they in place? Are they happening? What happened with the funding that was appropriated last year? Were, they, were those funds used for those purposes? Or yes, um, the funding for Brownfield is um, still active. Um, and um, it's going to close out one of the funding agencies, which is the Brownfields assessment that we had since 2004. That's going to close out this year. But the Brownfields Petroleum is going to be carried over um, for 2010. Also for the EPA, that is not an accurate. Um, we did not have to utilize any funding for even our development authority. We didn't have to use any funds for economic development authority. Okay. Yes. Um, you know, the economic strategic grant um, for one hundred and five thousand dollars is that money that we also be used for this strategic planning process? Excuse me. Repeat that. You're under your special funds, you've got an economic strategic grant, USDA, $105,000. Is that also the money that's going to be used to reward the strategic planning process? Supportive of that and supportive of our other efforts to help us bring 
additional focus on workforce to our work as economic developers when we're out working with businesses.
anybody run that by you in terms of economic development? And in particular, I think one was the tarmac site and one was Mayo Island. Uh, no, I'm not having a direct conversation, does it? So you've had no conversation with regards to that CIP money that was talked about earlier from community development. I do not recall any conversation. Okay. All right. Thank you very much. Yes, The lost employee uh, was renamed, you said. It's, it's technically, it looks like 1.4 employee. How did that? Yeah. Yes, we did, I did some repositioning within our departments next year, and uh, I'll let Mr. Wayne explain this. <laughs> maybe I made maybe I'm not sure. On page 321, it's you know, kind of a lost employee or the employee that disappears. And then under the agency special fund, there's an increase, I think, of an employee. I think that's page 228. And I'm just trying to make sure, you all said there wasn't any real loss of an employee just to rename. I just want to make sure I think that's where we got with that, the lady. This is Brendan Williamson again. There was actually, um, there were a number of positions in our department that were actually misallocated in the initial proposal. We've been working with our budget analysts to correct those in the revised budget. This may or may not reduce in a one position uh, unidentified reduction of staff. We're working through that now to figure out what that situation is. Um, however, the bulk of the positions uh, that I think you're talking about where it shows a position funded in uh, nine but not in 10, most of those were actually reallocations as we've been going through reorganization and building staff over the last year, actually. So they happened over the course of this year, 2009, including the maintenance worker um, position or the marketing manager. I think the marketing manager position was actually specifically asked about in the questions that you had for us, and we addressed that in our answers to those questions. And the answer to that That position was reallocated in, to a project development manager, and that is uh, the person who's currently in charge of the farmer's market. And there was a $500,000 increase in the special fund. That's not the same $500,000 needed to implement uh, the enterprise and And the special fund? Yes, under economic development. Okay. I don't recall a $5,000 increase in special fund unless it was covered in this year. We had the um, care and the enterprise.
state funds and federal funds is very little bit that's actually coming out of the general fund. And I'm looking at this correctly. It looks as if um, for economic development, aside from the uh, 7th Street markets and um, the African American genealogies that are anything else in this like the state of federal funds. You all can draw that down if you plan to exercise this program. Okay, all right. Okay, I think we're straight. I'm straight.
get us a plan. Oh, thank you very much.